Um, I thought plantain was a banana. No. Yes, it is. Okay, that might be called a plantain. Are they called plantains when I Google it? It's plant. Yeah, it's like a green banana, right? The under. Well, it's the under ripe or not ripe yeah, banana. Yeah, they're it's like a plantain. Spanish, right? I yeah. think so. But like, it's a wheat too. It's also a wheat. Hold on, I haven't seen anything about it being a banana yet. <laughs> it's a ban It's a banana. Good morning, you beautiful people. Welcome to Cyrus Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jen. And today, it's all about that tea garden. That's right. So, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the herbs that I'm going to grow for my tea garden and my herb garden and some of my favorites that I did last year and some new ones. So, hopefully, you all can um, decide what you're going to grow too and we'll just rock out the tea garden. Yep. And I'm just going to sit over here and kind of nod with her <laughs> because this is mainly all her today. All right, so I grew a tea garden last year. It was my very first one. Um, for as long as I can remember, I wanted to grow a tea garden and I just wanted it to be this really beautiful thing that I could grow all these herbs and stuff and sit in the middle and drink my tea and just really enjoy um, the time and see the pollinators and all that. So I finally got it started last year. But let's back up just a tad. We've grown herbs. So yeah. we've had herbs just all the time in our garden, but it's like cilantro over here, maybe a little basil over here in a pot somewhere. But this is a designated tea garden. Yeah. And this is showing you all how you can do it too in just a little bitty plot of area as well. Yeah. So we did it in a raised bed. Um, well, three by 10. Three, three by, by 12. Ten. Sorry. Three, three by, by 12. 12. So it was very small. Um, I think I had about 10 different herbs in there, I believe. And then you had five potted. And then five, five potted. Five. Yeah. Um, and then some other random stuff in different places. You know, you put herbs everywhere because they're good for everything. Um, One was holding down a weed tarp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was just a, it was a really small thing. And I grew a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, you all told me would choke other things out and that it wouldn't be able to do it. And um, But we proved that that was just not the case. Um, yeah. We kept everything cut back. We kept everything managed. And, you know, we harvested it when it needed to be harvested. We didn't let it take over anything else. And overall, it was extremely successful in a very small raised bed. Agreed. And this is what's going to happen when comes spring. There's going to be sprouts everywhere yeah. for a lot of different things because that's what they do when they, they drop their drop their seeds. It's just going to keep sprawling out. We're going to have mint in a bunch of different places and stuff. But that's stuff we can manage yeah. and remove where we want to remove uh, what because it's in this nice contained raised bed area. So that is something to expect if you do do a garden or a tea garden and a raised bed. You're going to have volunteers everywhere come the next spring, but that's okay. You can control it. It is because a lot of those things too are good for bugs and pest control mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, but we are going to expand it come spring. So it's going to be a whole lot bigger because there's a whole lot more that I want to grow. Uh, you all have shared a lot of your seeds with me throughout the year and told me your favorite herbs and um, stuff like that and encouraged me to grow. So I've added those to my list as well as found a lot of new stuff in the Baker Creek whole seed catalog. So we're just gonna kind of go through that and talk about what we're gonna do and why. So Jen's 2020 tea garden, <laughs> here it is for everyone that always asks. All right, so first on the list is your basics, basil, cilantro, oregano, parsley, uh, stuff like that. All the stuff, sage that I grew last year, mint, all the regular stuff that is in everybody's kitchen, all the herbs, you know, the spices that are good for cooking. They're all good for teas too. Um, a lot of them have medicinal purposes like the basil and the mint and all that stuff. So we're gonna do all that again. Um, I was able to harvest quite a bit from a few of them and some of them not so much. Like the sage, I didn't get very much. Um, I could have, but I kind of slacked on that one. It was in a pot. Yeah. It didn't have much room. So I kind of took what I could and then we'll do more next year. But that's the first round. Um, I do also want to do bee balm, but I, a few months ago, found a whole pasture of bee balm back in the back of our property. So I don't think I'm going to grow any. I think Is I'm just going to use stuff? that. It's the one with the, I showed you, we took a picture. Did we? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah. It's right where the goats used to be. Where the goats used to be? Yeah. Which town? The first town. The males? Yeah. Like over there where the horse flop thing was? Nope. Over here? Yep. <laughs> I don't remember no bee bomb. I don't even you know what, been there. I don't know what bee bomb looks like though either. <laughs> you might not have been there. <laughs> but anyways, it's really, really good and we've got it growing wild. So we're just going to use that and there not have go. to designate a space to grow any. Nice. Yeah. 
So with the basil, we're going to do regular basil, just your common kitchen or basil. Um, and then I also want to do lime basil and wow. Thai holy basil. Um, both of those are awesome. The lime basil I've heard is great. And the Thai holy basil can get so big and beautiful and smell so good. Um, so we're going to do both of those. Are I you going to be doing this one again? No. Uh, so last year I did licorice basil. Um, it was good, but it wasn't my favorite. Is this the one that kind of tastes like cough syrup? Yeah, I mean, it tastes like black licorice. Yeah. And which, I had it, um, if you mix it with something else in a tea, it's not as bad, but if you just do it plain in a tea, it's a little bit like cough syrup, and okay. it wasn't the most enjoyable thing. So I actually have um, half a quart, and I think that's gonna be enough for me for a while, because it is so potent. So I don't yeah. think I'm gonna grow that one again. But it was easy. So um, lime basil and Thai holy basil, if you're writing this down, because we are, I don't know if we're gonna be able to write all this down in the description below because there's quite a few. So the first two variations are lime and Thai holy basil. Yep. Continue. Next on the list Bye. is... <laughs> trying to pepper up a little in my bed. <laughs> Next on the list is chamomile, which I grew last year. Save some. I've really been enjoying that in tea. That's just the obvious. Um, chamomile is perfect in tea. It's perfect for anxiety, for stress. For all that, I should probably make some tea. <laughs> <laughs> Chamomile is very good. Yeah. I, I like this one as a tea, yeah. sure. And it grew like crazy. Yeah, here. it grew really well. So. Which she doesn't have a whole lot saved in here, and it's because she used so much of yeah. it throughout the year. That was the wild part. She used a lot. Yeah. Um, next is some common chives. I really want to grow some chives just to be able to have for cooking. And you know, and when whenever we're cooking something and we want some, just go out and snip them off. And um, I've heard they're really easy, so we might try that. Yep. Um, the next is the Paradiso mix of Echinacea. So Echinacea is good for all kinds of stuff. Um, medicinal, it has so many medicinal properties and you can get all kinds, but this one is a very colorful mix. And I just thought, well, you know, why not choose one color when we can just do all the colors. All the colors. <laughs> um, so I think so that'll mix. be really cool. Echinacea. Echinacea. Yeah. So I tried to grow some purple cone flowers last year and they did not did we? Yeah. I don't um, remember. Over with the sunflowers and they just, mm, they didn't do right, well. That's right. That's right. Um, they never really, well, they came up a little, but then they didn't ever do anything. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it was probably the soil because it was in our tilled garden. So I think we're going to try that again this year really? and focus more on having them in good soil and not just throwing them out and expecting them to grow. I'm practicing for our garden walk. Paradiso mix. Echinacea. Echinacea. There you go. She won't even let me butcher because she knew <laughs> I was about to. Echinacea. Got it. Next. Uh, the next is fennel. Fennel is awesome. I actually saw Rachel Ray use it on her cooking show. Rachel Ray. <laughs> I'm not a, the hugest Rachel Ray fan, but I like some of her recipes. Um, and she was using fennel on top of her salad and it looked really, really good and it looked really hearty. So I want to try to grow that and just not a whole ton of it, just, you know, a little bit and see if we like it. And then if we do, then we'll do more the next year, but just kind of want to do a trial and error with that one. Well, thanks Rachel Ray. <laughs> <laughs> next is lemon balm. I grew it last year. Um, that's some of it. And I, uh, by the way, all these are dehydrated. I don't know if I said that. Um, <laughs> we dehydrated all these herbs once we harvested them and put them into these jars. Um, but I grew lemon balm last year. Absolutely love it. It is maybe one of my, actually, I think it is one of my top five herbs to grow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Over the chamomile? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, besides, that would be good. I think at the end here, you need to give your top five of yeah. what, yeah. Okay, continue. Besides, just eating it straight out of the garden because it tastes amazing. Yes. I love to do, I love to put it in teas. Um, you can cook with it, but my most favorite thing is that I make lemon balm tincture and it's lemon balm and vodka and it's perfect for cold sores. Um, <clears throat> we, me and my family, we get really bad uh, cold sores, which funny thing is I have not had one since I made the tincture. So I haven't even been able to enjoy it. <laughs> Um, I'm sure I'll get one here soon because it's winter time, but it's perfect for it. Um, I've given it to my mom and I've mailed a few out and you all have loved it. Um, it's just, it's perfect. It takes those cold sores right away. It makes the pain go away and it's easy. Um, anybody can make it. You know what's funny? Every time I see like these little bitty jars like this, you ever been to that, like seen videos of like old <laughs> hospitals and stuff like back in like the thirties, yeah. forties and fifties. Like I feel like it's like Jen's like secret potions. <laughs> like she's going to turn me into Frankenstein one day or something like that. And this is the stuff she's going to use. Yeah. But yeah, it's awesome stuff of what we've heard. Like I said, she's never used it. And yeah. I don't get cold sores hardly at all. I don't even remember the last time I had it, but yeah. So there they are. There they are. 
Next is lavender. I did grow lavender last year, but it never got big enough <laughs> for me to be able to use it. Um, I think it was maybe just a soil issue. I don't really know. I mean, it germinated just fine, mm -hmm. but it just never got to its full potential. It was just one of those that was very slow too. Yeah. So I, I think we should probably put it in a pot. Next probably, year. yeah, we might try that. Mm -hmm. um, but I just want, I want to be able to grow it because first of all, it smells really good. Um, you can use it in soaps and stuff like that. And um, it's just a kind of a, something that you just need to have in your tea garden. It's I feel like really the, an option. I feel like lavender is one of those that have so many uses. Yeah. Like over some of the other ones, mainly because of its <clears throat> scent, right? So a lot of people love a lavender scent. So candles, soaps, lotions, shampoos, laundry detergent, yeah. all that stuff you can put lavender in. But then also, you know, you can turn into an essential oil or tincture yeah. like this. And lavender is really good for kind of your skin, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Like, I mean, you, you just have so many options with lavender. So that's why it's a really crucial thing to have in your tea garden. Yep. Look at me dropping some of that knowledge right there. <laughs> she stopped me a thing or two. <laughs> Next is mountain mint. <clears throat> you can never have too many mints. I have regular mint. I have chocolate mint. Um, and I really want to try this mountain mint. We have also wild mint somewhere, somewhere here on our land. I have never found it, but I know it's here. Um, sometimes when you go out in the morning, you can smell it. And his nanny has told me all about how um, her grandmother used to go out and pick her mint and put it straight into her tea in the morning. So I know it's here. And they were on this land, so yeah. we know it's got to be pretty accurate. Yeah, but all the mints. You can never have too many mints. There is probably a million different kinds of mints. You and know, your chocolate mint out there is actually still, yeah. like, it's still trying to make it. Chocolate it's, mint is awesome, yeah. if you haven't tried it. Yeah, it is. It's, it's definitely my favorite one uh, in her garden to uh, actually pick and eat. It's yeah. my favorite. All right, next is the marshmallow. So I've never grown it, um, but I've heard that it's awesome. I think somebody actually sent me some seeds, um, one of you all, so I really appreciate that. So I think I already have those seeds and I'm gonna grow that hopefully if it works. Um, like I said, I don't know too much about it, but I'm gonna have to do some research and see what kinds of stuff it likes, but um, it's edible. Um, the, it says the root and velvety Leaves have been eaten as a vegetable for centuries, often fried with onion and garlic. That sounds yummy. Yeah. And if you're wondering what we're looking at, she's looking at the whole seed catalog. Whole seed catalog. Yeah. So that's, uh, we've talked about it, I think, the past yeah. three videos. So that's what it's in there. Yeah. Um, where does it start? Where does the herb The herb start on page 350. 350. So yeah. uh, she's been kind of going in order from there, if you're following along. Yeah. You so say the hi? marshmallow, um, pretty much every herb book that I've ever read, has marshmallow in it and says, you know, you have to grow this. It's perfect. You can do so many things with it. You can make so many things and um, cook with it and all that kinds of stuff. So I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be good. And we'll try it out. It's kind of like the other one that I was saying, kind of a trial and error. See if we actually use it. If we don't actually use it, then we won't grow it again. Bring on the marshmallow. Yep. So next is dwarf moringa. So I actually have some moringa seeds that aren't dwarf that I need to plant. So I think I'm going to probably do both but this dwarf moringa can be put in a pot because it's not as small so moringa is a tree but this one is a little bit smaller so you can put it in a pot and it should grow just fine but if you haven't ever have you haven't heard of moringa it's amazing um, it's so good for you everything about it is I don't know if it's actually called a superfood but I feel like it could be called a superfood um, it has 46 antioxidants 18 amino acids and it's a complete protein that's, yeah, that's a superfood yeah. for sure. And um, I've never really heard of anybody having trouble with growing it. Um, when I first got my seeds, I was hesitant and I still haven't planted them because I only had so many and I didn't want to ruin it. Um, but the lady who gave them to me said, no, it's easy. Go ahead and plant it. You'll not have any issues. She said, put it anywhere on your land. It doesn't even matter where you do it, but it'll come up just fine and everything will be good. So oh, we're definitely well, going to do that. Yeah, for sure. It sounds like that's one everyone yeah, should have. But I'm thinking the seeds that I have can be planted outside and then the dwarf moringa we can put in a pot and take in and out to the greenhouse nice. when it's not the best weather. Moringa for days. Yeah. Moringa. She is going to be testing me during garden walks with all these fancy names. Yep. <laughs> and it gets better. Next is purslane. So I know a lot of people that have this kind of growing wild. I don't think we do. I've never seen it, um, but it's good for salads. It's edible and it's supposed to be really medicinal. So we're going to try that and see how it goes. Purslane. Purslane. Not parsley. Nope. Purslane. Purs -lane. There you go. <laughs> All right. So next is plantain. So this is variegated plantain. Yes. And not just any plantain. Yeah. Variegated. We have plantain all over our yard. And while I really want to be able to use that to make salves and also it's edible, 
Um, we have four dogs and a cat that use this yard, so that's not really an option. Um, outside of our fence area, I haven't seen it much, so it's basically just been in the backyard. So if I can grow this variegated plantain and keep it contained to where the animals can't use the bathroom all over it, then we can be able to eat it. And I really want to make some salve. Um, plantain is really medicinal and basically everyone has plantain. You could probably find it in your yard right now. It's just like dandelions. Um, I thought plantain was a banana. No. Yes, it is. Okay, that might be called a plantain. Are they called plantains when you Google it? It's plant. Yeah, it's like a green banana, right? The under. Uh, it's the under ripe or not ripe yeah, banana. Yeah, they're it's a green like one. It's a plantain. Spanish, right? I yeah. think so. But like, it's a wheat too. It's also a wheat. Hold on, I haven't seen anything about it being a banana yet. <laughs> it's a ban It's a banana. I know if I'm thinking somebody else is thinking it. Plantain banana. Yeah, plantains. Cooking banana. Fried plantains. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so there's plantain bananas and there's weed plantain. Well, I'm not growing bananas. We're going the weed form to make salves out of. Yep. And when I say weed, I mean weeds as in grass. <laughs> yep. Um, next is rosemary. That's simple. Rosemary, good for tea, good for cooking. A... It's just your common. Classic. Another one of those classics that everybody should grow. Um, I grew rosemary last year, but it, it never ended up in its right spot. So it got destroyed by the animals. But I'm really excited about that one. And next is stevia. Um, you yeah. all told me and told me and told me that I should grow my own stevia. So I'm going to do it. Um, if you don't know what stevia is, it's a sweetener that a lot of people use in coffees and teas. That's also the plantain, yeah. just by the way. Yeah. But you all told me that it's easy, um, that it's good, and it's simple. So I'm going to try it. Um, I might not get... You know, I'm probably not going to get a whole lot of harvest from it. Obviously not as much as I want to. It's just kind of those things that you probably have to do in, you know, high yields to be able to get what you want. That's good. Cause but, you're, you're all about some natural sweeteners yeah. and stuff like that. So I think that's a really good one to do. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it's any good. If we like it. If it yeah. is, then we'll add it to the rotational list. Rotational list. <laughs> <laughs> Next is St. John's wort. I, it's actually, it's the second to last. And I think it's my, the one that I'm most excited about. I have never grown it, but I've always wanted to. Um, my mom is a believer in St. John's wort for anxiety and depression type stuff. I took it some as a teenager and it always seemed to help. Um, it's kind of, I don't know, it's not one of those controversial things, but you know, you don't want to do it too much, you know, too much at one time and all that kind of stuff. You have to be kind of, you know, frugal, not frugal. Kind of on the, the opposite of frugal. Is it kind of on the country lines? Kind of, what, yeah, I guess about. it could be. I mean, probably not that serious, but um, it's just, it's really good for insomnia, depression. Um, it's very medicinal and it's a beautiful flower. It's a pretty little yellow flower. So I'm really hoping that we can grow some and be able to dehydrate it and put it into teas. Maybe capsule it. That might be hey, something we can be cool. figure out. That'd, that'd be, be cool. really Next awesome. To go here. Um, because I do buy it from an herb store. So if I don't have to buy it anymore, that'd be even better. You know, and I think you kind of touched on something like if you take too much of it, it could have counter effects. And I think that's almost with anything, yeah. right? Yeah. Like it literally is. anything you ingest in your body, if you take too much of it, it's going to have a counter effect, you know, yeah. with meats and everything. So yeah. always kind of keep that in mind when you do anything. Yep. As beautiful as it is, too. It's really good for pollinators. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love anything that produces more pollinators is always better. Yep. So last but not least, yarrow. Yarrow. <laughs> um, it's just the common yarrow. And we have wild, like if you drive out to where we go get our feed, there's wild yarrow everywhere. Mm -hmm. However, I don't really like stopping on the side of the road to pick it from fields because you never know about people. Um, so I'd really like to grow our own. Ideally, I would like to have it in a small batch but lady later maybe on just kind of throw it in the field and let it grow i think yeah. that would be really cool we uh, have not only for us but for the pollinators we have some designated pollinator areas yeah. um some what's the one that looks like chamomile but it's not chamomile i think you're thinking of the bee balm the bee balm i think so oh no 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 you're thinking of that it's just wild daisies. Wild daisies. Yeah. Uh, we have a bunch of wild daisy areas that we intentionally do not take down just because yeah. it brings so many pollinators but it could be something we add this stuff in the mix of things yeah. too um, so yeah, yarrow is pretty Throw cool. Throw it out in the field and see how it goes. Right, and then <laughs> start foraging and all yep. that good stuff. But yep. yeah, I think that'd be awesome. So um, that was it. Besides, Hang on, there's uh, a couple. Okay. That was it. Say. Besides my marigolds, um, I'm not gonna get too into that. But 
I got the tea gardener kit last year from MI Gardener and it's the edible marigolds. They are not poisonous whatsoever. Some marigolds are. Do your research. Um, I cannot tell you every variety and whether they're poisonous or not because I don't know. Um, I didn't go to college for that kind of thing. All I know is I got mine from the MI Gardener tea garden kit and they're edible. They're not poisonous in any way. So with those, I like to make calendula salve. Um, you can put them into teas. I haven't done the tea yet, but I need to. Um, it's because this salve's so awesome. Yeah, That's but the marigolds were awesome. Um, they were really, really, what's the word? Prolific. Prolific. Um, I was constantly harvesting marigolds That's probably our and best I dried producer. a bunch so I still have a bunch of seeds from that. Um, I can still make some more salves if I want to and it's just kind of something that you need to have. Oh and comfrey. I yep. forgot about As comfrey. I was, say, I was gonna bring it up. That was yeah. my favorite this year. Was I think that's one of the top five. The comfrey is probably my favorite. There's just so many different things you can do with it. It's so easy to grow. I really hope that we can bring some starts to the shindig and be able to sell them um, to you all because you all have been so interested in it. But that comfrey is something that I will never not grow. Yeah. It's just well, so good. Unless, it's hard to get rid of comfrey once you start because yeah. it's so deep rooted. Um, it's Even if you think you got it all, usually you have it somewhere and it'll just come right back from the roots. Yeah. So uh, that's one thing to remember about comfrey. Um, you can keep it at bay, but you're probably never going to get rid of it. Yeah. You know, you'd have to really destroy the area that it was because it is so deep rooted, but that's just something to keep in mind. Love my comfrey. Yep, love the comfrey. We have it uh, down right now. It's cut down. It's a, say the word, not annual, but. Perennial. Perennial. I always want to say prenatal or something. <laughs> like that. Um, so it'll always come back once you got it in your spot there. We just got it cut back and it's actually hanging out with our carrots. Um, one of the best things with comfrey is it's a great just drop and cut uh, fertilizer. Yeah. So you just cut the leaves, part. throw it right back in your And ground. the goats love it. It's really good for them too. Really good for the goats. And the salve is probably the best thing. Yeah. It's so great for like Comfrey's arthritis, salve. sore muscles, and stuff like that. So Jen is planning on having a lot of that stuff at the Shindig, let's just say, because we are going to be vendors there. But yep. that's some of the stuff there. One that she didn't mention, which I'm really surprised about, and I know it's going to be in there. She just might have forgot about it. Dandelion. Oh, Dandelion yeah. salve. Yeah, I did do that. Um, I did a dandelion leaf, and yeah. this year we didn't have too many wild dandelions pop up for some reason. I don't know why. They kind of popped up really quickly and then disappeared. Um, but I did grow the leaves, and the leaves are awesome. They're edible. You can make salves out of them, and you can use the root for all kinds of medicinal purposes. So I did do that. I forgot about that. Yeah, so the dandelions And are when good. I got tired of it, I just fed it to the goats and chickens, and they yeah. loved it. Yeah, it's great. It's a great yeah. grant for them. And then, of course, dandelion salve, which she yep. didn't get to make last year, and then I'm sure she'll make again this year, though. Yep. Okay, so if you can't tell, I love herbs. I love my herbs. I love my tea garden. I love everything about it. It's something that I have just always been interested in, and now I can finally do it, and I've learned so much. Um, I've told you all, you know, about the books, Rosemary Gladstar, any of her books are amazing. You can learn so much from them and overall just experience, um, learning what works for you and what doesn't, you know, you could grow every herb out there, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. um, just narrowing it down to the things that work for your family and your favorites, yeah. um, things that you can do stuff with, not just teas, but like the lemon balm, you can make tinctures, you can make comfrey salve, calendula salve. There's a million tinctures out there, all kinds of stuff that's good for you and your family. And having a shelf full of herbs and tea is probably the coolest thing ever. Yeah, and I agree. And just like she said, just kind of wrapping that up too, is it, so many people I feel like the biggest thing to do with herbs is they grow all these herbs yeah. and then they just die and they literally never even pick one plant off of them. At a minimum, get them bad boys in a dehydrator or yeah. let them hang. And then you can at least use them later on for something once you've done more. But yeah. just don't let them go to waste. Right. I think that's the biggest thing I see people use with their herbs. Is, Agreed. They just die off or they bolt or whatever yeah. it may be and they don't get watered. Uh, so don't let that happen. At least pull them off. You can hang dry them yeah. or you can stick them in a dehydrator. I mean, we do both around here. Um, and then just throw them in your little jar. And you know, now we have them. So now we have options to be like, okay, we at least we know we have these and we can go to them when we want to. Um, but there was two things I wanted to show them real quick, just cause it does go so well with the tea garden and for people that might be wanting to do this. Yeah. The second thing I always see people do, like I said, I want to show a couple things, but it goes right with that, is they do these things and they don't, they're like, how do I make my own tea? It's extremely easy too. So you get your dried herb and then they sell these little things. So this would be like for a personal cup. You just fill this up. It just opens right up. 
You stick your little dried herbs in there. You can even do fresh one, can't you? Yeah, you can do fresh or dried, and yeah. you can mix. It doesn't have to be one. Right. You can mix, mix them together. and. I think one of our favorites was the chamomile and chocolate mint. Mm -hmm. That yeah, was really, really good. good uh, but then you just put this in with your hot water, lay it in there, and it's just it works just like a tea bag. Yep. So say you wanted a bigger teapot. Or we both wanted tea. Right. Then you have this. It's just the exact same thing on a bigger standard. So you put your hot water in here, and then you put your herbs and there, drop it right down in. Yep, it's like a diffuser. Yep, and then boom, you have your own natural homemade tea. So you don't you don't have to have tea bags, you don't have to have all these things. They sell all this stuff. Yeah, that and is... I use my teapot too. I like, oh, yeah. I like the common teapot that whistles and then pour the hot water over the herbs yeah. and use the little we, diffuser We thing. usually use this thing yeah. more than anything. Um, this is probably the most common thing, uh, just because it's a lot of tea and usually too little cups is enough for us in one night yep. and we move on for the next one but if you're interested in any of that stuff it's in the amazon store like i said if you're really just looking for one thing this yep this is the coolest thing that you could probably get because that's your personal tea bag so now we're probably gonna go make some tea yeah because they're kind of <laughs> in the mood for it now all these teas and everything's up might as well do it yeah <laughs> all right well hopefully y'all enjoyed that hopefully it is um, a little bit of inspiration for maybe what you want to grow in your tea garden i know a lot of you have tea gardens and a lot of you don't you're just starting out and hopefully this helps and i hope you all enjoy your tea garden as much as i do yes it is my favorite thing in the world right and keep <laughs> watching because we're going to be growing all this in our yep. garden you'll get to see it has been so rainy here that's why y'all have like the past three videos of yep. sitting right in here we're Never sorry hopefully that ends soon and we'll get outside we'll show more tea garden stuff she'll give a top five hopefully out there yeah um and then we'll be growing all this stuff so you get to sit and you can grow it with us but uh that's why she wanted to make sure she could do it now yep. before you bought your seeds go ahead and get your seeds and we'll get started in the next few weeks that's right i'll post a picture of that list yep. i won't write it all down <laughs> all right. Right. we love y'all until the next one bye, bye.